والله يدعو الى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء الى صراط مستقيم الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره نعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها فإن كل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار وإنما توعدون لآت وما أنتم بمعجزين I praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he's the only one worthy of praise I seek his help, his guidance and his forgiveness I believe in him and I trust him I seek refuge in Almighty Allah from the evil of our passions. Indeed, whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides him to al-Islam, no one can mislead him after Allah. And whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put him astray, no one can guide him after Allah. I testify openly that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah Rabbil Alameen. And I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his messenger and the seal of all the prophets. O oh Muslims, you must know that the best speech is the speech of Almighty Allah, which is the Quran. The best guidance is the course of the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is his sunnah. The worst of all affairs is innovation and addition to the religion of Islam. Indeed, every addition to the religion of Islam will lead to hellfire. I adjure you as well as myself to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the best of your ability. Fear Allah. Have the taqwa of Allah and don't die unless you are in a state of Islam. After this, I greet you all with the greeting of Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace and the blessing of Almighty Allah be with you all. I'd like to welcome you all for continuation of reading from Book of Riyadh al-Salihin, Guardian of the Righteousness by Imam al-Nawawi, rahmatullahi alayhi. And today, inshallah, we're going to have a new chapter. And the chapter is going to be Kitab al-Ilm, this book number 12, the book of knowledge. Chapter 241, Bab al-Fadl al-Ilmi, Ta'alluman wa Ta'aliman lillahi ta'ala. Virtues of knowledge, which is learning and taught. For the sake of Allah. Before we go any further, we see how Imam al Nawawi, Rahmatullah Alayhi, had put the title Babu Fadl al Ilmi, Ta'alluman wa Ta'aliman lillahi ta'ala. Virtues of seeking knowledge and teaching knowledge for the sake of Allah. For the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as usual, Imam al-Nawawi rahmatullah alayhi started his chapter with few verses from the Quran. And one of the verses which in Surah Taha, verse number 114, وَقُلْ رَبِّي زِدْنِي عِلْمَ Which is the meaning is, and say, My Lord increase me in knowledge. In other verse, Surah Al-Zumur, verse number 9, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, قُلْ هَلْ يَسْتَوِ الَّذِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Are those who know equal to those who know not? 
This is Surah number 39. This is Surah number 39, verse number 9. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, يَرْفَعُ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمَ ضَرَجَاتِ Allah will exalt in degree those who, who believe and those who have been granted knowledge. Surah 58, verse number 11. And a last verse for this chapter is saying, this is Surah Fatir, which is Surah number 35, verse number 28. إِنَّمَا يَخْشَى اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاءِ it is only those who have knowledge among his slaves that fear Allah. Let's focus in the first verse that Imam al Nawawi rahmatullah alayhi starts his chapter with وَقُلْ رَبِّ زِدْنِ عِلْمًا O oh Allah, increase me in knowledge. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Although he is the prophet of Allah, he is the messenger of Allah, he is the man who receiving revelation from Allah, and he gets this relationship with Allah, but he's calling in Allah, asking what? Money, wives, children, camels? No. Knowledge. Knowledge. This, this is what he wants. This is the water that you can irrigate your soul ways, nourish your faith ways. This is the most important thing, knowledge. And before we go any further, when we're talking about chapter of knowledge, Babul Ilm, what Ilm? Because there is many types of knowledge, many types of Ilm. There is Ilm which is related to Allah, related to the prophets, related to the hereafter. And this is the type of knowledge which Allah had blessed the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam as well as all the prophets before. The wahi, the revelation, special communication. Note that we try to degrade or put down any other knowledge. But it is very important when we talk about superiority or learning and teaching knowledge, we are talking about a special kind of knowledge. We are not talking about chemistry, we are not talking about physics, we are not talking about any knowledge except knowledge which related to Allah. There is nothing more important in your life than Allah. And there is nothing greater than Allah. So also the greatest knowledge and the most important knowledge is the knowledge which teach you about Allah or about how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the type of knowledge that the Prophet sallallahu is searching for. And that he calling in Allah asking for more. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us also with the knowledge of this deen. And that Allah bless us that we act upon the knowledge. The second verse for you to understand that they are not equal. قُلْ هَلْ يَسْتَوِ الَّذِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Of course, they are not equal. Not in the understanding, not in the rank, not in the reward, not in the way how they behave. They could not be equal. So since you understand, and this is a common sense, that those who know they are not equal to those who don't know, that for you to try to learn so you can be among those who learn so you could not be down you be up you be elevated this is something very important they are not equal and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said Yarfa'illahu alladheena amanu allah raise up allah will elevate in ranks in position in this life, in the hereafter, among the people, the respect, the dignity, in paradise, Allah elevate those who believe. And also, those who have been given the knowledge. So we have to understand the importance of knowledge in Islam. 
and there is no way to Allah unless that is established or on knowledge. As a result of this, we see that Imam al-Bukhari, rahmatullah alayhi, he's making a special chapter in his book, the most authentic book after the book of Allah, Sahih al-Bukhari. See, Bab al-Ilmi qabla al-Qawli wal-Amal. Chapter of seeking knowledge before saying or acting. Okay? So it's very important before you say something, before she teaches somebody, before you make amr and ma'roof, amr bil ma'roof and nahi and munkar, before you give da'wah, that you have the knowledge first. So Allah is saying what? Fa'alam annahu la ilaha illallah. Therefore, get to know that there is no one worthy of worship except Allah. This is the knowledge first. And after this, وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لِذَنْبِكَ And seek forgiveness for your deed. So, like they say, there is a horse and there is a cart. The horse is to pull the wagon. You could not put the wagon in front of the horse. It's not going to go anywhere. You could not worship without knowledge. You could not worship without knowledge. And I'm going to give you a small story. It's too long, but I try to summarize it. And also, I try to ask you, to go and read it. But first let's finish this few verses. Here. That those who have the khashya. The true fear of Allah. Are the scholars. Are the knowledgeable people. Those who. Why? Why? Because. Seeking the knowledge. Going to give you a clear idea. About who is Allah. It teach you about the greatness of Allah. And the more you get to know about Allah, you more that you will fear Allah. Let's have a small break. And after this, we tell you about the story of Juraj. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Welcome back to our show. And we're talking about superiority of knowledge. And we're talking about the knowledge of the deen of Allah. And we want to start this segment with a small story to show you the importance of seeking knowledge. This story has been told by the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, about a man by name Juraj, the previous nation. And he used to worship Allah a lot, but he was not a knowledgeable person. He was involved in his prayer when his mother came to call in him to see him because she missed him. And she started calling, Juraj, Juraj. He was involved in the prayer, say, Oh Allah, Ummi wa salati, Ummi, should I answer my mother or I continue my prayer? But since he was not a knowledgeable person, he continued with, the volunteerly prayer. The mother got tired, she left. A week later, two weeks later, she came, calling her son, Juraj, Juraj. He was involved in the prayer. Oh Allah, my mother and my prayer, which one I should do? He was not a knowledgeable person. 
he he was a worshiper عابد and there is a difference between عابد and عالم so he continued his volunteerly prayer if جراج is a knowledgeable person he will cut his salah and answer his mother because his salah is volunteerly prayer pleasing the mother is obligatory he continued his prayer his mother came to the third time to visit him calling him Juraj oh Juraj say oh Allah ummi salati my mother or my prayer he continued make his prayer his mother fell bad and she made prayer supplication dua against her son she said Allahumma la tumithu hatta turiyahu wujuh al-mumisat oh Allah something in this meaning don't let him die until he will be approached with the faces of the prostitute women Allah answered the call of the mother of Juraish and you can go and read this story which is in Riyadh al-Salihin okay and this under the title of the first the three people who talk in the Mahd الثلاثة الذين تكلموا في المهد so this is with one of them and what happened but Allah had answered the call of the mother of Juraish so if Juraj was a learned person, he will understand there is a priority. And pleasing his mother comes, number one, before his voluntarily prayer. Let's go and see some of the hadith, which is a collection of Guardian of the Righteousness, which have been collected by Imam al-Nawawi, rahmatullah alayhi, and the first hadith, 1376, وعن معاوية رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من يريد الله به خيرا يفقهه في الدين متفق عليه نيرتد معاوية may Allah be pleased with him Allah's messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said when Allah wishes good for someone he bestows upon him the understanding of the religion so this is a sign this is a blessing. If you want to know that you really are a blessed person, see if Allah gave you the understanding. Not only the nusus, because you can memorize many hadith, many verses, but you don't understand. But the understanding is something very important. Because sometimes we have the hadith, and we keep arguing of the hadith, but we did not have the understanding of the hadith. So this is something very important. That Allah bless you with the understanding in his deen. Now this is a sign that Allah attends what? Khair, good for you. So we didn't see here that whom Allah wishes good or attends good for him will give him a Mercedes Benz or a Cadillac or give him, you understand, four wives and two right hand with this and five horses. All this. No, 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 because this is nothing but al hayat dunya You have it today, tomorrow you lose it. You understand? But the knowledge will be with you, will guide you and will help you and will be reward for you even after you die. Here's the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying this next hadith. 1377 reported by Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu an that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam قال لا حسد إلا في اثنتين رجل آتاه الله مالا فصلته على هلكته في الحق ورجل آتاه الله الحكمة فهو يقضي بها ويعلمها نيرتد Ibn Mas'ud may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with him that the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, may the peace and the blessing of Allah be upon him. None except two men only may be envied. A man whom Allah has given him property, which he spends it in the good cause. And a man to whom Allah has given him wisdom, 
which he teaches to others and by which he judges between people. And this hasad is not the jealousy. This is not the hasad tamanni zawal ni'mat al ghayr that you see a person has a car and you give him the bad eye and you wish that he loses his car. No. La hasada, this, that in this hadith, that is no envy that for to admire somebody. To have a ghibta, to wish that you can be like him. You wish be in his place. This is what we're talking about. So whenever you see somebody, Allah give him anything from this material thing, don't worry about it. Because it can be a means of his destruction. A car, a wife, a woman, whatever. But really when you see somebody have one of these two, now they say, oh Allah, give me what he gives so and so. Oh Allah, I wish I'd be like this person. Please Allah give me. What's this? One whom Allah give him the knowledge. Give him the knowledge of the deen of Allah. As a result of this, what he's doing? He's doing two things. He teaches to other. And he judge the people and give ruling to them according to this knowledge. So he benefit others. He teaches to other and he judge between the people with it. What is the other person that you should admire and you wish to be in his place, in his shoes? A person whom Allah give him wealth. Okay? Money. But what? That he, Allah give him the money, one hand, and give him the authority in the other hand to spend it in the cause of Allah. That means, halakati, he will finish it to the last dime for the cause of Allah. Hospital, he will give. A mask, he will give. Uh, somebody going to make, he will give. Anything pleasing to Allah, money, nothing except a means in his hand. Not a goal. Because some people, they get the money, this is their goal. Is a goal. But is, money is not a goal. Money is a means to achieve Allah's pleasure. By spending, by assisting, by caring. Now, if you see somebody who's rich, don't say, oh Allah, make me rich. But when you see somebody rich, and he using it to get closer to Allah, now say, oh Allah, give me like he gives so and so. Next hadith, very beautiful hadith. The Prophet ﷺ give example about the knowledge, the revelation, the wahi that been given to him. Saying, مثل ما بعثني الله به من الهدى والعلم كمثل غيث أصاب أرضا فكانت منها طائفة طيبة قبلت الماء فأنبتت الكلأ والعشب الكثير وكان منها أجادب أمسكت الماء فنفع الله بها الناس فشربوا منها وسقوا وزرعوا وأصاب طائفة منها أخرى إنما هي قيعان لا تمسك ماء ولا تنبت كلأ فذلك مثل من فقها في دين الله ونفعه ما بعثني الله به فعلم وعلم ومثل من لم يرفع بذلك رأسا ولم يقبل هدى الله الذي أرسلت به So the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم in this hadith he divided the people to three categories mankind he divides them to three categories one in, in a relationship of the knowledge the deen of Islam some people, a good land, like you have a desert, you have sand land, you have mud, you have a mixture, okay? So it's not all the land are the same. So when the rain come, a good land will receive the rain, will receive the water. As a result of this, it gives in return vegetation. 
and the people will benefit. So the land benefit and the people benefit. The second type of land is a qi'an. The second type of the land is a jadib, like rocky, rocks. It doesn't observe, it doesn't take the water. So it holds the water. As a result of this, the people will come, buckets, and take the water, and you go to some place else, and make a benefit of this. Let's, inshallah, stop here for today. We can continue later on about the beneficial knowledge that we ask Allah to give us this knowledge, inshallah. Until I see you again next time, I'm your host, Muhammad Saad Adli, from Columbia, South Carolina. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik. نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك and thank you for watching